I'm Dave Thompson, the great-grandson of Anna Steer. With us today is Leah Jensen Thompson, the granddaughter. I think you're the last yeah. living granddaughter. Leah Thompson Jensen. Le Le oh, Leah Thompson Jensen. Sorry. Uh, she's the last living granddaughter of Anna Steer Thompson. We get our surnames mixed up. Um, her brother, William Thompson, is the son of William Thompson, the, the son of John. He is my father and her brother. So that is our relationship. Today is May 5th. We're at Leah's house, which is about a half a mile east of the original settlement of the first settling in Hall County that uh, Anna Steer and company settled. And we are on the place where William uh, lived. And correct me if I'm wrong, you're the historian. <laughs> and uh, there is a discussion of which house is older, the one over a mile, half a mile west, uh, this one uh, on this place, this one we think was built in 1874, which is probably the first, the older one. Um, the, what we're gonna talk about today, um, Leah knew Anna Steer as a child. You were what, six years old when she died? Mm -hmm. uh, so we're gonna talk about the first settlers, talk about all of the family stories about uh, the Anna Steer and company, about uh, her father and his growing up here, and my grandfather, and then uh, Leah's uh, own childhood. Okay, morning, Todd. Well, Aunt Leah, now that we've established that you're 59 <laughs> and knew your grandmother, Anna Steer Thompson, uh, what do you remember about her? Well, it was a privilege to go to Grandma's house when she lived in Alda because she had a yellow crock bowl. And when I came, folks and I, she'd want me to go get ice cream from the drugstore. And she put a quarter in the bottom of this yellow bowl and I had to carry that bowl of ice cream back to the house, and it was so tempting. <laughs> but, um, and she lived there. She was very quiet. She said, I'm always ready to go somewhere, just wait until I change my apron. She always wore an apron, black, and she had her black cap on. She was ready to go. But then when she passed away, I remember um, they had the coffin in the church and it had a glass lid on it. It didn't have a wooden lid. And you, so you saw the whole body. And it, it was spooky. You didn't like that much. Mm -mm, I didn't care for that. Yeah. But other than that, Grandma was cheerful. Did she come to visit you uh, uh, at your house? Mm -mm. You had to go to Alda. Mm -hmm. Had to go there. She was living alone at that time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Uncle John to live next door. Uncle John did. Oh. Next door. But um, she lived over here. She and Grandpa. But then he passed away, and she had this big black dog. And she thought, what am I ever going to do with that dog when I moved to Alda? Well, the day before she moved, the dog died. <laughs> so it's buried over here in the yard. Uh -huh. But um, there wasn't really too much that I remember about Grandma other than that, a few things. Grandma always had cookies, but Mom brought the cookies. They tasted a lot better at Grandma's house than they did here. <laughs> but 
was done. I guess that's about it. About what you remember as a as a kid, six years old, uh, you know, I think ice cream and cookies are a good thing to remember somebody by. Oh yeah. <laughs> and Grandma always had, and Mom always brought cookies when we went. But they were a lot better than what Mom had at home. They were <laughs> the same cookies. <laughs> well, uh, what uh, family stories about uh, your grandmother did you hear in, when you were growing up later, maybe from your father or your mother? Uh, mm. How was life Hard. back in the prairie? Hard. They um, tell about when Grandma had all the little kids. And she had one milk cow, and um, that's what she fed her children with. And she went out to the barn one morning, and poor cow was dead. It had gotten in the stanchion and was upside down. Mm. So she had to go ask the neighbors to help her feed her kids. She did. But things like that happened, I guess. Times were tough. Yeah. Well, I remember a story your father, my grandfather, told of uh, Indians coming in to the place to beg for food. Mm-hmm. You remember that story? Mm-hmm. When they turned the dogs loose? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, uh, Greyhound dogs that were they had uh, could run outrun the Indians and they, but if you gave any food to the Indians, uh, then you were not going to survive the winter. So they promised the Indians they could have the dogs if they caught them. And <laughs> how many of the dogs came back that night? Yeah, all of all of them, wasn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. They they come and they look in the window. You know, hold their hands up to the window. And see what we had, what Grandma had on the table, and then they beg. Grandma would give them something, and if it was butter, they take the butter. If it was a loaf of bread, they take the loaf of bread and the eggs. But then when they left, they found the egg, butter sitting in the middle of the yard. They didn't like butter. They didn't eat butter. Mm -mm. Too high cholesterol. They Must knew then. Somebody. <laughs> Um, there was an Indian settlement just down on Wood River, I think. Straight south. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dad said they could see the bonfires at night. <coughs> and they, um, they really weren't, they weren't destructive. They just didn't have the same culture we did. That's right. Or They'd invite Dad to go down and eat with them when they had food. So Dad went and he said he was sitting there looking and he looked and the meat had black and white hair on it. He said that was enough for him. <laughs> he didn't want that. You suppose that was skunk? Skunk. It was a skunk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it was nothing else to eat. Yeah. You do what you do. Now, uh, there is some confusion in my mind of where Anna and John married and how how did they meet originally? How, how did the story come down in the Germany. family? Germany. They knew each other in Germany. Mm -hmm. Denmark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, how they met, that I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just know where they met. And what the date was, that I don't know either. So they must have agreed to meet up again mm -hmm. in America. Evidently. Yeah. And one, we're not sure where they got married. We can't find the marriage record anywhere. I don't know. I don't know. We, the story goes it was Council Bluffs. Um, yeah. Maybe. In Hannibal, Missouri, it's featured a lot. Hannibal. Yeah, but I don't know why. Certain things that they talked about. Yeah. 
Well, John had to work in a factory back, uh, mm -hmm. where was that? Ohio. In Ohio? Was mm -hmm. that Cincinnati or someplace else? It was wherever the Bolivar Watch yeah. factory was. So he was there while Anna was here. Mm hmm Trying to make enough money to get back here. Mm-hmm. And what do you live on? <laughs> Good wishes. <laughs> Good wishes. What did he eat? Very sparingly. Yeah, the story I remember is he ate nothing but beans. That's all. Yeah. That's all he had. Did uh, family stories talk about uh, the first house that they lived in out here? Did they have a dugout or build a log cabin or what? I don't know. The only thing I ever heard was a log cabin, a log. Not, not a dugout. Mm -hmm. But um, then they started to build, you know, get ready to build over here. But Grandpa talked to it that all the farms on the high places in Hall County, you know, there was, they didn't build down here when it was high up here. That way he kept all of it out of flood plains. Yeah. So they never had a flood? Nope. Even in that big one, what, 80? Or 60, 67. 67. 1967. Yeah. We didn't have water here. There was yeah. water all around, but the house and everything mm -hmm. was dry. Yeah. So Grandpa knew where how to pick a spot. That's right. He did. Every place he had it up on a knoll. I was uh, looking uh, to the west uh, to see if I could see where the original spring was for the original settlement, and uh, what's your recollection of what was told, where that was? Well, I saw it was along the driveway there about halfway, it was north of the trees over there, mm -hmm. and it had like a lot of willows around it, mm -hmm. and it was on the east side of the driveway, mm -hmm. and it wasn't too big. It was like a pothole in one sloop? Yeah, just about. Yeah. And they had, well, that was a source of water for them that spring. And then somebody got the bright idea, well, to make a pond out of it. So they built a dam across, so they covered up the source of water coming in. So they didn't have a pond coming back. So <laughs> it died out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I noticed there's some trees about halfway between uh, Engelman Road and Ray's driveway. That, mm -hmm. that must be about where the spot is. Yeah, it was on the left side of the driveway. Mm -hmm. And it had, it was kind of kidney shaped. Mm -hmm. But Dad always said when they did that themselves, they covered up the spring. Otherwise it was running water. Hmm. There wasn't any more running water then. Now, do you recall uh, how they got the land? Did they buy it? Where did they? This is way before the Homestead Act, so they had to buy it from somebody. I think the railroad, wasn't it? It was railroad land they bought it from. I think. Mm -hmm. Because the Homestead Act was... Uh, I think Grandpa, your dad, was 10 years old. 1872 was when that was passed, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, they, they got it from the railroad. Mm -hmm. they, they could buy so many sections of land. And then they had to leave some, a gap in between. And then um, eventually they got to buy most of it. Mm -hmm. Well, there weren't many trees here at mm -hmm. that time. Mm -mm. They went up to the loop and got trees to bring down here. And that includes some of the cedars that are here, doesn't it? 
right? Mm -hmm. How many of those cedars are still? <laughs> one. Just the one out here <laughs> one out by there. the well. <laughs> That's right. And that was hauled down from the loop. And about when did that happen, do you suppose? I don't even know. It was before I thought about anything like that. <laughs> So that tree is well over 100 years old, it's for sure. It's old. It's old. Yeah. Uh-huh. And there was a whole row of them, you know, they planted from mm -hmm. the driveway, and somebody lit a bonfire and was going to burn out the ditch down there. And we didn't see it burn. The dog started to howl, and I got out, looked out in my land. That fire was jumping from tree to tree. By the time the fire department came, that was the only one they saved. Wow. It was scary. <clears throat> I don't like fire. So, uh, they didn't really talk too much about the early settlement uh, when you were a kid then uh, in mm -hmm. the family. They just thought that was a regular thing? or That's right. They it? just assumed it. Mm -hmm. Nothing was said. So, I'm thinking about your father, my grandfather. Uh, he told me some stories. I stayed with him one summer for a while. Uh, when you went on vacation, I remember some stories uh, that he told. The one about the Indians chasing the dogs was one. But wasn't he in the state legislature at mm -hmm. the time? Yes, he was. And that's where that picture is. That was the big one. Okay. Yeah. We have a picture of William. Uh, he was probably 40 years old or thereabouts. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he was in the legislature, He's a distinguished looking chap. Has the Thompson nose. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't we all blessed with that? <laughs> that's all right. They always said every pen has to have a handle. And then we've got one. Yep. <laughs> so, um, what was your father like uh, and, and your mother? Uh, there's a, another pair of real early settlers uh, as well, because uh, they were married, almost, well, more than 100 years ago. Mm-hmm. Well, Mom was quiet. She didn't say too much. She was a seamstress, did a lot of sewing for people. But Dad, well, he wasn't noisy, but he was always there, mm -hmm. very interested in anything political, well, he, agricultural. Didn't he have some offices in the county as well? Yes. What did he? What offices did he hold? Uh, he was county surveyor. I think that was the only one. Wasn't he the county treasurer at one time? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, he was. Because I remember mm -hmm. when the uh, bank uh, failed. Do you remember that story? <laughs> yes. What did you tell about that? Well, <clears throat> it just closed its door one day. Everybody was left holding the sack. Including all the county's money. Yeah. So what did he do? He was the treasurer. Yeah, well, he had to do something. I don't remember why it was, but I know that he did something. I remember the story because I had some of the checks. He mm -hmm. transferred all his asset to Grandma or to mm -hmm. your mother, mm -hmm. and she wrote all the checks for a year so that they... Nobody be. could sue him for a loss that the bank caused. It wasn't yeah, any it fault wasn't of his. Bank's fault. Uh -uh. Yeah, I have some of those checks. Uh, you do. I do. Good. Yeah, they were signed by Louise Thompson. Hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. uh, well, for you know, for things they needed in the house. Mm-hmm. They didn't buy much though. Well, I remember that you had electricity on the farm. Yes. 
And my, I remember my dad telling him about a 1902 Cadillac that your dad had. Mm -hmm. So he was up to date with everything. I think he had all the toys, didn't he? I think so. He had a old radio at yeah. Atwater Kent. Tell about that radio. <laughs> oh, it had three dials on it in the front. It was a box-like thing. And you had to set each dial. And the only electricity we got for that was a battery. And the battery came from the, the, the current that we had. We had a generator, I think. Uh -huh. Yeah. It was a generator with glass battery boxes. I remember seeing those. They're pretty green. Mm -hmm. And there was two shelves of batteries in the shed out there that had where they came from. Every day they had to start the motor to charge up the batteries again. And we didn't have much light in the house, but we had light. Well, we were big shots. <laughs> Well, it's a pretty good thing to have. Mm -hmm. I remember Dad telling that uh, he had an antenna that ran all the way out to the windmill, and he could dial up every radio station that existed in the United States. Mm -hmm. They were all a lot stronger then so, because they were wide apart and didn't interfere with each mm -hmm. other, so he could do that. Yeah, it went up. It came out of the house and went up a cottonwood tree. <laughs> And then it went from the cottonwood tree to the windmill. Mm -hmm. A single wire that I remember. Now there's a lake by the place. Uh, tell me about the lake. How did that happen? Oh, Dad gave them the construction company or the county the gravel. Gave it to them if they would pump there and put it on the roads, the county roads, and they did, so that's how the lake got there. And that would have been about 1900 time. or thereabouts? No. A little later? Later. Oh. Okay, I can remember them. Oh. So it would have been... Pumping. You were a kid then? Little. Okay. Yeah. Um, he said, well, the roads needed to set gravel, and he had the gravel, so he said, mm -hmm. give me the pit, and you can have the gravel, and they did. I think Lyman Ritchie was the company. Yeah, they're still in the gravel business. Are they? Yeah. Well, that's the one. Yeah. Then, um, how about your childhood? What, uh, what do you remember best about living on the farm? Oh, I can remember walking to school. We never had a ride. We walked. And Dad, if it was stormy, Dad walked ahead of me. And if it was a snowstorm, I could step in his steps. <laughs> but he was there every day. He took me to school. Mm -hmm. And when I got out of school, there was Dad waiting for me to take me home. But we walked. We didn't drive. And that was the country school? Uh, District 3. District 3. Mm -hmm. And then later on you went to high school in Alda? Right. Oh, and I had polio. I couldn't maneuver out there anymore in the country. So then I um, lived in a in the Emil Thompson's, and went to school in Alden. Oh, I didn't know that part of the story. How old were you when you had polio? Nine. Nine. Yep. From my recollection as a kid, it didn't seem to slow you down too much. No, after I couldn't walk, and the doctor told Dad, get her to swim, get her in the water. So all the water we had was a sand pit. So he <laughs> threw me in the sand pit. And I swam, and I walked again. Mm -hmm. 
good therapy. Yeah. That water was cold. Oh, well, it was cold. <laughs> it was cold. But um, that did help. Then when I got back out again, I was, all right, I could walk. <laughs> I remember Dad had cattle, and he wanted to feed them, you know. But he couldn't drive the truck and feed them both. So he said, you drive the truck. Okay, I'll drive the truck. And I'd go right down the fence. Oh, he <laughs> out in the pasture. Oh, he was unhappy with me. <laughs> How many fence posts did you take out? Mm, a number. <laughs> he, he wasn't happy. I remember you chasing me around the farmyard in, in a Model T when I was about five years old or so. I think you had more fun than I did that day. <laughs> There's Empty, your kitty. <coughs> See if she comes up to get her picture taken. Well, maybe. You can get your picture taken. Mm -hmm. yeah. Emily uh -huh. has always had a pet no, no, no. of some kind. No, you can't sit on the table. And no. all of her pets seem to mirror her personality. That is, they're a little bit honored. Yeah. And Impy is well named as being an imp. You are independent, too. And independent. Yes, we should mention uh, Aunt Leah lives out here on the farm by herself. She does have some uh, health care people come in to help her. But she prefers life in the country. Uh, yeah, where could she get a view of the prairie like she can out of her front window, is what she always says. So, uh, this is home. Yeah. And that pioneer independence, I think, is showing right here. <laughs> well. <coughs> and how long have you lived in this house? Since uh, the flood, what, 87? And 37? Ah, 60. 60 something. Yeah. So you built this house then. Mm hmm before that, you were living in the old house mm -hmm. where John and Anna lived. That's right. That is just next door. And that house was built. All the material, all the labor, everything for fifteen hundred dollars. Well, mm -hmm. which is a lot of money in those days. Yes, it was. It was a big house in those days. A big house. That was just, oh, they, well, I, I won't say anything now. There's a bottle up there in the cupboard above the oven. Yes. That came from Hamburg, Germany. That they had in the house over there. They put it with a snack bottle. Oh, yeah. And they put it under the, I don't know what is it, the floor above. And then we should go to the down the next story. Well, we made a trip up in the cubby hole and found this bottle. It looks old. Tell us about it. Well, really, I don't know too much about it other than after that we found it, it was up there. And what's been in it, I don't know. It says uh, Posen Ham. And uh, well, Hamburg. Yeah, Hamburg. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what... I don't know. P-O-S-O. Panto Posen. What do you suppose is... I don't know. Oh, Panto Roig. Somebody that knows bottles can tell us what was in there, but uh, I could make my guess. It was either a medicine or whiskey. <laughs> Probably whiskey. Being what was that? <laughs> it was That's stairs. Under the, yeah. under the stairs? Under the flooring. Oh, under the flooring. That house has two levels in the attic. One level is full, a foot higher than the other. And it was in the 
between the levels. Uh, this mm -hmm. is the type that they have a cork and then a wire mm -hmm. covering that would latch onto this knot. Uh -huh. They hold it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I just did it with Grandma. They never made much of an issue of it. Neither about Grandpa. It, it was all they always said they hung the dead ends on the wall. <laughs> and, and how old do you think she was when this picture was taken? I don't have the faintest idea. Cause she looked oldish, maybe. Yeah, but not as old as those long ones. Yeah. We got this picture uh, from the back, and uh, curious who's doing the picture. Grandma and Grandpa Cruz. So this is your mother's, mother's family. family. Yeah, I, Grandma and Grandpa and, and her brother and sister. She had one sister. Mm-hmm. Tony. And uh, I don't know how old it was. I, I don't know. It, it seemed it was always there. I mean, I always... So it was always hanging yeah, in the house. Yeah, it was always hanging out. Mm-hmm. I can't see that. Mm. Other than it's, uh, your, your mother's parents and... And her sister okay. and brothers. All right. Yeah. And they were Merritt County. Merritt County, uh -huh. okay. Did you see them often? No. But no, they were... Uh, I came along too late, I guess. <laughs> so, um, no, I didn't see much of them. Okay. Grandpa Cruz, yeah, I saw him, but nothing. Mm -mm. The rest of them, they went to California and to Washington, and I never saw them again. Okay. We found this picture of your grandfather. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about the picture and about him that we haven't talked about? Well, he was a farmer, and uh, he had cattle in the yard there, and he had a calf that he wanted to rope. So he tied the rope onto a post, and he held the rope with his hand, and the calf bowled it and cut a finger off. So he only had three fingers. And uh, other than that, he, he was a quiet, unassuming man. I didn't know him very well. I think I was afraid of him. With all those whiskers, uh, mm -hmm. I think I would have been afraid of him, too. Yeah. He was soft-spoken. He didn't raise his voice. But that's about all I can tell you about him. And here's a picture of your father, my grandfather, at the time he was in the legislature, which I think was 1898 to, two, to 1900. Mm -hmm. Now, he was elected from where? Hall County. Alder Township. Alder Township. Um, wasn't that in the two house legislature? Yes. And which house was he in? Representative. The representative. Mm -hmm. And um, incidentally, I have a picture of my son posed just like this, and they, they look very similar. Yes, they do. They sure do. He was um, the legislature was in session at a time when uh, how in the world did he get to Lincoln from Grand Island? Did he ride the train to get I there? I think so. I think he did. Because I remember hearing stories of, of uh, long wagon trips to Lincoln for supplies yeah. when he was a kid probably. Mm -hmm. I think he went by train. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, he was a had already been elected to several county offices, and he was well known. Uh, even though he was a Democrat, or was this county? Uh, how was this county or <laughs> yeah, oriented in those days? I don't know what the political orientation I, was. I suspect there was a lot of Republicans around. I think so. <laughs> I think there was because he um, he only got it for two years mm -hmm. and he was defeated. I think. Oh, he was defeated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it was somebody else's turn. Sure. He was ready to go back to the farm, I think. I believe so. Yeah. There weren't that many to go around. Somebody had to take turns. I think so. Mm -hmm. He was known for his honesty uh, from what I've read about him, which is probably the biggest reason he could get elected to such an office. I don't know that he had any great political ambitions. I don't think so. He was I a don't. farmer at heart. Yeah. But he wanted to be in the legislature, yeah. and he got to, so. And what his political views were, I don't know other than he was a Democrat. The arrival of the uh, Sandhill Cranes is a big deal these days. What do you recall about it in, in your time? They were always here. I mean, nothing was done about it. They just came and left, and they got their thermals, they were gone. And it cranes big drop in the pasture. They rake up all the manure apart, <laughs> which was good for life. But other than that, they didn't, nobody did anything to them. They just went about their business. So here just a short while and away they went, you know. Were there any using cranes at that time? One or two we'd see once in a while, I said. But I've only seen one flying over here right over the house. And other than that, I don't, um, don't remember anything particular about the cranes. There were a lot of them. Were there more then than today, you think? Or no, there were more today. More today? Mm -hmm. I wonder why that is. I don't know. Probably more to eat in the cornfields. Yes. There wasn't any, there were any cornfields and, you know, mm -hmm. plant what they had to have for the animals. But, um, there's a big thing. Oh, well, it was an ant that all up and did it. Well, the uh, cranes uh, today uh, are a big deal, and uh, that was just part of everyday life for you. That's right. Yeah. It came and went. We didn't pay any attention to them. It's just natural. Um, they make a big deal out of water in the river for the cranes. The uh, river routinely went dry. Mm -hmm. Did it bother the cranes when the river went dry? They left. They leave them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the plant went dry every summer. I dug out one of uh, the shotguns uh, from the attic, and uh, I think this one was your father's, my right. grandfather's. Uh, I remember a story he told of uh, going down to the river, I think it was Wood River, he walked down and he was probably just old enough to be able to carry this thing and uh, climbed up over the bank and peeked over and saw a, a flock of geese uh, and, and so he crawled back up and pulled back both hammers and let fly with both barrels and after he got done tumbling back down the bank, he climbed back up and there was more geese to take home than he could carry in one trip. <laughs> so that's my recollection of, uh, of his hunting because uh, it was plenty of game. 
And uh, when he, we had cattle and milk cows, and if the cows didn't want to go in the barn, like they were out in the pasture, so he'd take a bucket on his arm and the shotgun on the other arm, and he'd go out in the pasture and milk the cows, but he had to carry the shotgun because of the bull. Oh, yeah. That was the only defense he had. So yeah. he always carried the shotgun and, and the bucket. Dad always said you don't go around a bull without either a shotgun, a ball bat, or a bull whip. That's right. Well, he, Dad took the shotgun. Took the shotgun. <laughs> and I remember him shooting several times. But he, well, he didn't kill the thing, but he let it know that he was there. <laughs> yeah. But um, he always had that shotgun. That, that was his partner. Partner. Mm -hmm. This is a cap, I guess. Um, it looks like a muzzle loader. Um, well, I mm -hmm. see a break in it. I'm not going to try to cock it, but uh, it's old. Older than you and me put together, I think. <laughs> 16 barrel. 16 gauge. Yeah, uh -huh. 16 gauge. That's Fancy looking gun in its time. Oh yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. He was proud of it. It's uh, it's probably one he had as a kid. I, this I thing think so. Really old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, what what uh, did you do when the storms came by, like they're now forecasting for? Uh, the area today. <laughs> we had a shell under the old house over mm -hmm. there in the other place. Yeah. And we went down there. And I remember one time one came and Dad went out to the driveway to see how where it was coming, to see how bad it was. And he didn't come back. And he didn't come back. And we thought, what in the world? Mom and I were sitting in the cellar. And he laid down in the ditch and hung on to the weeds, <laughs> and the thing went right over him. He was black as ace of spades when he came home. <laughs> Rain and mud yeah, and mud. debris. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't make it back to the house, so he laid down in the ditch. It's a very good idea. Now. I recall he kept the weather records uh, for... Oh, yeah. Well, I have that barometer. Do you want a picture of it? I brought uh, your dad's old barometer over to uh, talk about his keeping the weather records. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Every morning he had Betty's barometer, Betty's thermometer, and his rain gauge, and then he recorded in a book. Well, you had part of that That's book. part of the book. Yeah. And um, he did that as long as I could remember. He had always, and he knew what the weather was going to be when he looked at, you know, some people fantasize, but he didn't. He knew. And he kind of taught me. I hear things and see things, and he said, oh, my goodness, it's, it isn't that way. I mean, you can read the weather by watching it. What's coming? What's going to be? These days, there's a lot of talk about global warming as the climate is supposedly changing. Now, with what you know from your uh, past and what you know from your father's uh, uh, record keeping, what do you think about global warming? It was cold back there. It's getting warmer, but not that much. Do you think uh, the idea of warming is uh, more political than scientific? I think so. I think so. Not scientific. Mm -hmm. But it was cold back there. Oof. And we had snowstorms and violent storms. Well, we're fixing to have a violent <laughs> storm this afternoon, I think. 
They had one in Kansas last night, wiped out a town of 1,500 people. Mm -hmm. I heard him say that. I don't know where it's at now. I haven't seen it on the Yeah, topic. they haven't looked at the map, but it's going to blow up something. Oh, I think so. Every time it gets this humid mm. and, you know, sticky warm, storm coming. The barometer is dropping. And uh, the cattle were joyfully around this morning, running and jumping. That's a bad sign. Yeah, it's, um, Even the kitty was out. Of, she was to the house this morning. It's up in the work somewhere. But how close it is, I don't know. But you can feel it. Well, when you get outside, it's like we have. <laughs> we do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you walk in a sauna. My recollection was that when the U.S. Weather Bureau fired up, uh, they looked around for weather records to have a base to start from, and they took your father's uh, record as a base to start from. So uh, he was the, the ancient uh, weatherman. Right. No TV in those days. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. And every morning he was very faithful about recording everything. And then he had this hot water tent radio. And they do the markets and Friday stock markets. And he'd get them and he'd call them to Mr. Van Kent and to report what the market was. Uh, what the market was? market was, yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't have newspapers or anything like that. So he was right up to date. Uh-huh. Everything. He was. And he impressed on everybody. About what he should do. I was living in the past. Okay. Well, maybe that's how he got elected to office. Could be. He see it to get it. And he needed somebody. Mm-hmm. He didn't know he had a Democrat. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see what the Bible says today. And it's dropping and it's 2970. That's not a good sign. Mm -hmm. It says T. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any idea how they got it. And then with the better gas front, you know it's a hundred years old. There's no mark on it. Yeah. And it still works. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. They don't make them like that anymore. No. No, they make them like that over there. Yeah. Thank you. I like this one. Yeah. And that eyes, and he tap it. Every day. Yeah, you got to tap it. You have to fix it. You may have to do it. That's right. Yeah. Say, uh, you haven't really talked about your later life. Um, it's been a since uh, you lived in this house since 1957. Uh, mm -hmm. With your husband, Alvin Jensen. And that's it good. I'm in 50 years with him. Yeah. About 50 years. I don't think he wanted to be a farmer, but he, he turned out to be a good farmer. Yeah. He made a living. He was substituting out there. And then they worked in a city beat factory. Mm-hmm. And we had chickens. I think everybody in town knew you at one time because they came out here about age. Uh-huh. We had 2,000 hens. And we had a yacht up town, alley. Good stairs and doctors, hospital, everybody about age. This is all right. Yeah. Um, it is so I clean chicken that I didn't like. <laughs> mm -mm. No, it is so to me I see that. Mm -hmm. And I haven't died in 1992. Mm -hmm. 
Ya, 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 And um, garden, garden, garden. I gave my little tractor. Yeah. Tractor and heard it. He got the tractor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He got in the air, so he got the tractor. He got the tractor, so he got it. Yeah. He got in the air, so he got the tractor. No. Uh, I had died. I had died. Yeah. 
Sitting in the hospital in London. He was there. He was starting to see her. Around the head, the pain back in the front lines. He was in the back. Yeah, I did it. 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 I